Thank you, Leader. Uh, Senator Tuberville has mounted a profound assault on the professionalism of the military of the United States. These ladies and gentlemen who are selected, it is based on their performance, their dedication, their sacrifice, their service. They are selected by other professionals strictly with respect to their skills, their talent, and above all, their commitment to the Constitution of this country. Now they're becoming political hostages. That's all. And that is a dangerous, dangerous trend for our military and also for our political process. We're in a situation now where we are beginning to see critical positions that are in jeopardy of not being filled in a timely way. One of them, as uh, Senator Schumer alluded to, is the Fifth Fleet that operates in CENTCOM. And so when you hear a lot of my colleagues, particularly my Republican colleagues, talk about the great threat to Iran, uh, the, their, their hostility, et cetera, well, ask yourself, how is denying the Fifth Fleet a commander going to help us in that area of contest and struggle. It's not. It'll hurt us. As Senator Schumer also said, they are blocking the appointment of our U.S. military representative to NATO at a time when NATO is a key part of a worldwide coalition to help the Ukrainian people fight back their Russian invaders. Now, that's bad enough. We've got a lot of general officers that are on hold. But let's look ahead. Within the next eight months, there will be approximately 80 general officer and flag officer nominees coming through our committee. These officers include three combatant commanders, Cybercom, Spacecom, and Northcom. Three deputy combat commanders, the deputy at Cybercom, CENTCOM, and AFRICOM. Three service chiefs of staff, the Army, the Chief of Naval Operations of the Navy, and the Commandant of the Marine Corps, and the Vice Chief of Staff of the Air Force. And in addition, in September, the term of the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Milley, expires under law. If this continues, we will have, within a few months, no leadership in the significant parts, in fact, almost the entire Department of Defense. We'll have acting people, we'll have temporary people, and we need leadership right now. This is completely unacceptable. So if my colleagues believe in the need for a strong military based on constitutional and professional values, they won't inject this political theater into this process. And if we do not have a coherent, organized leadership in the Department of Defense, then we're putting our troops at risk, grave risk. And that, to me, is unacceptable.